Hello and welcome back to the MVC PHP framework series. Uh, in this video what we're going to do is a major refactor of our auto loading. Um, it's going to be somewhat annoying but before we go through the annoying part of actually doing this let me explain why we're doing this. So the way that I got the index.php file open now and the way that we did our auto loading before um, is fine for a really small application. It makes things easier because you could just call your classes wherever you want. And I like that, but it doesn't scale well. So if you get a lot of other uh, classes going on, um, if you add a lot of directories, you're going to have to continuously add to this, um, just like we had to with our custom validators and our validators um, directories. We had to add to this autoload class. Well, there is a standard for autoloading, um, and we're going to be lo looking at the PSR4 uh, standard for autoloading, and we're going to attempt to uh, follow those specs and do that. The reason for that is because a lot of people use Composer, um, which is a basically a package manager for PHP, similar to Node for JS, and um, it has its own autoloader. And when you get a library or a package on Composer, um, those classes will be namespaced uh, accordingly. So in order for our, our framework to be as extendable as possible and for it to grow to larger applications, it's necessary to use that spec, not just for Composer, but just so we don't have to continuously uh, modify this autoload. So it's going to be a little bit of a... Um, refactor like I said but it's not going to be horrible so the way that it works is um, you give your classes a namespace so let's just start off and the first thing that we're going to do is go to and give all of our classes a namespace which will be pretty annoying um, there's no lying about that but let's start with our core directory and let's just open up all the files in the core directory let's go down these one at a time This is going to cause some bugs and some issues, but we'll fix them along the way. All right, so on the application, uh, the way that it works is the first thing after your PHP tags, that is when you need to declare your namespace. So to do a namespace, you just say namespace, okay? And then you do a space, and let me just, um, so you do a namespace, and then a space, and then you give it the namespace. In this instance, it's just going to be core. So all of our, all of our, uh, the namespaces for us, for all of these core classes, will just be core. The other thing is we need to look inside of all of these and make sure we're not using any other classes. In this one we are not, so it's safe to close that file. Now controller, uh, we'll give it the same namespace, so we'll say namespace, and that will be core as well. And we, But we are using, right here, we are using the application, so we extend that. So the way to use that is you, you will say use, and then you'll say core application. Okay, so now it will know where this is at once we redo our autoloader. Um, we're also going to have to change our uh, load model class here. Um, and uh, let's see, I guess we'll just go ahead and do that now so I don't forget to do it. So when we load our model, it will have it will need to have these namespaces uh, appended to the models. So what we could do is just create a new variable called uh, model path, and that's going to equal in our application all of our models are going to live inside of the app models directory. So what we do is we say app backslash models, and then two backslashes at the end. And then uh, we'll concatenate on model. And then we'll say if model path exists, so if that class exists, then this model dot model will equal this model path. Okay? So that should be all we need to do in this, unless I've done that wrong and we'll have a bug and we'll fix it. So I'm going to close controller and we'll move on to cookie. Cookie's going to have a namespace of core, and I'm not using any other classes here, so that's all we're going to need to do for this one. Um, the database, uh, this will be, we're going to have to do a little bit here, so the database will also have a namespace of core, 
And then let's look around in here. Um, PDO and PDO exception are base PHP classes, um, but uh, we need to tell it where those are at. So let's go ahead and say use, and then we just do backslash PDO. That's all we'll need to do for um, these. And then we'll also say use PDO exception. And let's look for any more. Okay, so DB. Uh, I'm just kind of scanning through the code so I can try to avoid any mistakes later. Um, and I think just to fix this, I'm just going to say new self here. So change that new DB to new self. And we'll close DB class. We'll continue on given all of these the same namespace um, and the form helpers we look like we use a session so we need to use that so you'll say use and then it'll be core backslash session that's how you use um, this and then now it's going to know where session lives okay uh, I think that might be it here so we'll close form helpers now helpers, uh, it will also be a namespace of core, and I think that's good. Input will have a namespace of core, and we're using form helpers and the router here, so we need to say use uh, core fh and use core router. Okay, and then the model will have a namespace of core, and we're going to use quite a bit of things in here, I think, or we need to at least, let's see, um, get class, we'll just leave that for now, we'll just, router, the router will have a namespace of core, and we use several things in the router. We use the users class, the session class. Um, that might be it. Users session. Okay, so we'll just say use core session and use app models users. All right, so that's the router there. I hope I didn't miss anything, but we'll find the bugs if we did, hopefully. Session, we just get, give this a namespace of core. And we'll quickly peruse through that. I don't see any other classes used here. Validate, now this one, um, you know what, let's delete this file. We're not gonna use this anymore, so why namespace it? we've got new validation and then finally in our core we need to do our view so we'll say namespace core and let me look through the view here and see what's going on okay I don't see anything in the view so we'll close that and that's all of our core now we need to do our validators so open up each one of your validators And in the custom validator, this is going to be namespaced. Uh, so this would be core. And then you just give it the validators like that. And then uh, that's it. And then let's see. Looks like we use the exception here. So we'll, we'll say use exception. Okay. All right, so that's the custom validator. So now we just need to go through the validators, and a lot of these are going to be the same. So it's going to be namespace, um, namespace core validators, and then we have to use the custom validator. So we'll say use core validators uh, custom validator and then I'm going to copy that because most of these are just going to be that 
So close email and then matches. Um, that's done. We'll just paste that there. The max validator, same thing. We'll just paste that there. Min validator, same thing. Paste that there. Numeric validator, we'll paste that. Required, also paste that. Unique one is going to be a little bit different, so we'll paste that namespace there. And then um, the other thing that we need to do here is, let's see. Um, no, maybe we don't have to do anything else. So that's that's good. All right, so that's our validators. So now let's jump into the app. Um, let's open up all of our controllers. So you should have four controllers. And uh, give me one second, turn that down. So our controllers are going to get namespace. And these are going to be app backslash controllers. So do you see how these match up with our folder names? So app, control, controllers, and then this is in there. This is going to extend controllers. So we have to say use um, core controller. And then let's see if there's any other. So we let's see, we, get, we need contacts, router, and session. So we'll say uh, use core session use core router and contacts so we'll say use app models contacts I believe that's it on this one so I'll admit that uh, this kind of sucks to go back and do now um, and this has a potential to add quite a few bugs if you miss any of these, but um, chances are it'll have something to do with these namespaces and using. So just keep that in mind. So we'll say namespace. Um, this is going to be uh, namespace app controllers, and it will use core. Controller. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this because all of these controllers will have these two lines. Close that. We'll look at the register controller. It's going to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we use the router and the users in here. And that might be it. And login. Okay, so we'll need to say use core router use core um, actually use app models users use app whoa, models login so models login router and I think that's it Alright, so we'll close that one. Our restricted uses, we give it a namespace, which I can just paste that in, and there's no other classes there. So that'll finish up our controllers. Now we don't have any custom validators yet, so now we need to do our models. So we'll open up all of these, and these are going to get a namespace of app models okay and then they will use um, core model because they extend the core model um, let me look through this okay so now we need to look at our validators and use those what else so in this one it's just the that's all we'll need to do we'll say use core validators required validator and use core validators max validator okay I think that's all for this class so I'll close that 
And actually, I'll just copy these first two lines because all of the models will need that. So in the login, uh, we just need the required. So use core validators required validator. All right, so that should be good. The users is going to be a little more tricky. We've got a few things to do here. So let's see. Uh, one thing we're going to have to do is up here in the constructor, um, this right here and this right here is going to call as a bug. So here what we need to say is, um, we we'll say app backslash models backslash users app models users okay for both of those lines there and then we have quite a few validators let's see if there's anything else session cookie and users and user sessions so this is going to be the biggest use that we do so let's let's load in um, use app models users use app models user sessions Let's see what else there was. Um, there was the cookie and session. So let's do those. Use core cookie. Use core session. Guys, make sure you pause the video a lot and make sure you're getting everything that I'm doing here because this, this will have quite a bit of chances to break things. Okay, so then all we have left is our validator. So we need required, min, max. So let's do those first. So use core validators, min validator. I'm just going to copy that line to make this a little easier. This one is max. Oops. Copy that. Um, Required. Let's see. And then there was email matches and unique. So email matches and unique. All right, so email min max unique required matches. All right, I think that's good. Um, so we'll go ahead and close down our users. And then our user sessions, we'll give it a namespace of app models. And here it looks like we need to use session and cookie. So use core session, use core cookie. All right, so that's all of our models. Um, we have a few spots in our views that we need to clean up, uh, that we need to use stuff. Uh, primarily go to the layouts and go to default and main menu. So in the default, we use session right here. So all we have to do is above this, we're just gonna open and close some PHP tags. And we're gonna say use core session. So I think that's it on the default.php. And then the main PHP here, we use router, helpers, and users. So we'll say use core router, use core h, and users. So that was use app models users. Okay, that's it for the main menu. Let's look at the register. In the register, we did use um, the form helper, so we'll say use core form helper. Same thing with register here. Use for form helpers. Okay, let's 
look at our restricted, make sure we're good here. Nothing in there, nothing in there. Uh, layouts is good. Let's look at the home index. Okay, nothing there. Dashboard, nothing there. Contacts, I'll go to the form here. And this will be use core form helpers. Okay. Uh, that's it for that one. So let's look at the rest of these just to make sure. All right, that all looks pretty good. So go ahead and close all these views. All right, so I think we're done adding all of our namespaces and use unless I missed one. So now we just need to write our new auto load. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to call it the same thing. So I'm going to say function auto load, and it still gets the class name passed in. That's not different. Alright, so what is different is that now we have to account for our namespaces in this, okay? So, the first thing that we want to do is we want to this we want to turn this into an array, okay? So we're going to say, uh, I'm just going to say class array, and that's going to equal explode, and we're going to explode by a backslash. So we have to use two backslashes for that. And then we're going to explode class name. All right, so then what we want to do is grab the last element of that array, which will be our actual class name. So I'm going to say class name, and that will equal um, the, um, we'll, we'll say array pop. So that'll take it off the last and return the, um, It'll return the last element of this array and take it off there. So then we need our subclass, or our subpath, and that will be everything before the class name. So that's the rest of this array. So if you noticed before, they have all started with capitals, and all of our uh, directories are lowercase. So what we'll do is we'll say string to lower. Okay, so that's going to make it a lowercase. And then what we want to do is implode. We're going to take that array and implode it, and we're going to implode it by the directory separator, and we're going to implode our class array. Okay, so let me show you so far what this looks like. I'm just going to do a var dump, and I'm going to, because I just want to show you so you're not lost on what we're doing here. So we'll do var dump class name, var dump class array. Uh, var dump, and I can't call this class name here, so this will be, we'll just say class, okay? So var dump class and var dump subpath. And then what I'm going to do is just kill the application because it's going to break right now. So I go back here and just refresh, and so now you can see that we have the first thing is session. So if you look at our first var dump, that's going to be our class name. Um, and let's see. We must have class name, session, class array. So let's go and uh, look. Oh, I see. So we, we need to, at the top of our index page here, we need to say use core session. We also are using the users and the cookie and the router. So use core cookie, use core router, and use app models users. Okay, that should be all of our classes here. So now if I refresh, now this is what I'm talking about. So now we have core session passed in, and we explode that, and then we have uh, core as the array, so that's gonna be our subpath array, and then session is our actual class that we're gonna load, and then this will be our subpath, so we're adding core back on. 
Okay, so now um, what we need to do is create our actual path. Okay, so path now is going to equal uh, our root directory separator, and then we want our subpath. So we'll concatenate on subpath, and then uh, directory separator, and then we want to do our class directory separator dot php. So then what we want to do is say if file exists path require once path. All right, if we don't have any uh, errors, this will be all of our autoloader. That's all we need to do. So we don't ever have to add anything to this because now, because of the way that we are constructing this, um, it's going to, uh, based upon our namespaces, tell us what our directory structure is. Um, so let's go ahead now and refresh. All right, so now we have uh, another issue that we need to solve. I'll tell you that the autoloader is working, but we have a problem is saying, hey, the class home controller is not found in the router. And that's because we broke our router now. So let's go and fix that. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this old autoload auto class, our function there. So now let's go back to core and let's open up the router. So it's complaining that uh, this controller right here, when we say new controller, doesn't exist. And that's because um, it doesn't actually exist because we are not um, including the namespace on it, okay? So all of our controllers are gonna be in the same spot, so what we can do is say controller, right here above here, on line 32 we're gonna say controller is equal to, and then we're going to uh, say app backslash controllers, and then two backslashes, and then we're gonna concatenate on controller, and that should fix that problem, so let's refresh. Okay, so that fixes that issue, so our page is loading again. So let's go back now and hit log in and just try a few things out and see if anything's broken. I'll go to register. Okay, so let's go ahead and, um, I'm gonna go ahead and insert something into the database here. And just make, we're just testing to make sure we didn't forget anything. We'll register. So then let's try to log in. Parham tools. Okay, so it allowed us to log in, so that's looking good. Let's go ahead and go to my contacts. And boom, we have a problem here. And it's saying uncaught. Error class app controllers users not found in the contacts controller line 17. So let's look at the contacts controller real quick. Go to line 17, and that's because we forgot to use it here. So at the top here, we just need to say app use app models users, and let's refresh. Okay, so there's that page. Let's go ahead and add a contact. Hit save. We're just gonna go through and test stuff. Click edit. I'm gonna add something there. And let's add a phone number. Save it. Uh, let's add one more and test our delete stuff. So delete me. And I'm gonna click delete, hit OK. Took us back to the page and our session message is still working. Uh, refresh. Okay, it looks like everything's going fairly well. Let me just try another validation thing by trying to add the same contact again. Curtis Parham. It allowed me to do that. So let's look at the contacts here. Contacts model. And we didn't have a unique thing here, so um, that will probably take a custom validator to do that and make sure we don't have duplicate uh, contacts, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because we didn't have that set up before. 
uh, logout. Okay, so our logout's broken. So let's look at um, app models model is not found in users session. So let's go and look at our user sessions model. And that's because we did not use the uh, core model right there. So go ahead and refresh. It did log us out and that's fine. Let's go ahead and log back in one more time just to double check things. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit log out. So I think everything's looking good. Um, if you guys have any other bugs, just keep uh, look at it and try to figure it out. It's probably an issue if you do of forgetting to put a use statement when you're trying to use a class. Because from now on, every time we add a class, we're gonna have to make sure that it has a namespace. Um, and that'll be either, it'll start with either app or core. And then it's followed by the uh, directories is this next part of it. So for us, this one right here is in app models. So it's app models and then user sessions. Uh, and then any sort of class, even when you extend one, you have to make sure you use uh, the use right here so that it knows uh, what this is. If you didn't want to do that, you could do this. You could say core backslash uh, model like that. Uh, I think that would work. Yeah, that would probably work. But um, I think it's a lot cleaner just to go ahead and do the use statements. And this is um, a better spec on our autoloader than what we had before, believe it or not. I know it's a little pain to have to remember to do this stuff, but you'll get used to it very, very quickly. And if you're using PHP 7, there's actually, you can use groups. Um, so you don't have to, you could actually do a group and not have to do each individual use, which would be pretty cool for validators and stuff like that. But at any rate, um, I hope you guys uh, followed along with this, and I hope you understand the need for doing this so that the framework is a lot can be extended a lot more, and so that we can use it with things like Composer and other autoloaders. All right, guys, well, um, that is it, and unless there's no other bugs with this, I probably won't shoot any more videos for a while. Um, for this series, I I should. I, I thought I was done with it 20 videos ago, so I could possibly uh, keep releasing videos. But for now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this course. And uh, check out some of my other courses and come on to the live streams. Currently, we're doing those on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, but I will see you guys there. Talk to you later.